Welcome to another video of STAT212. So in this video, we're going to introduce uh, measures of variability. So we, in the last video, we talked about measures of center. So now we're going to talk about how we measure variation. All right, so let me get this here. All right, so um, descriptive statistics. So we talked about um, how when we have a raw data set, right, we're just looking at you know kind of a, a list of, of data points. It's not very helpful usually for drawing insights. So what we might want to do is calculate some different descriptive measures. We could use um, measures like the mean or the median to kind of measure where the center of our data is. We talked about um, the five number summary as kind of measuring some positions within our uh, numeric variable. So now we're going to talk about measuring variability. So variability is um, kind of talking about how much, how spread out our data seems to be. Um, versus, you know, how, how um, kind of centered or clustered it seems to be. And there's a lot of different ways that we can measure variability. So we're going to talk about a few of those measures and, you know, what they kind of afford us. So um, probably the simplest measure of variability would just be the range of our data. That would be the distance from the minimum data point to the maximum data point. So if we're thinking about our heart rate data from before, the range of our data is going to be 117 to 41. And so that comes out to uh, 76, I believe. And so that's telling us, you know, what range our data is kind of sp uh, spread out across. Um, however, the range is probably not the, the best measure because um, it does kind of depend on how large our sample is. So if I collected a really small sample, my range is going to be a lot smaller than that. So it's, it's really only as good as my, my sample size in a way. Um, and just another thing is it tells us, it, it doesn't tell us a lot about variability. It tells us, you know, where the minimum and the maximum are, but it doesn't really tell us what's going on between those values. And, you know, what if 41 was like the lowest data point and the next lowest data point was like 65, right? So, so it'd be kind of a lot of unknown information here, looking at only the range. So interquartile range is another measure that might be thought of as a little bit more robust than, than range, and that's because it's kind of measuring the, the distance from the first quartile to the third quartile. So it's really measuring the middle half, the range of the middle half of my data. So that can tell me a little bit more about what's going on kind of in that main cluster of my data. So we can uh, calculate the interquartile range for the heart rate data, and that's going to be um, apparently it's going to be 80 minus 64 for the heart rate data. So this is going to be 80 minus 64 equals 16. Um, so definitely not as much variability if we're looking at the middle half of the data, kind of the middle sector. Um, so it looks like a lot of folks are in a very similar range of heart rates there. Now, the mean absolute deviation, this, this may or may not be something that you've seen before, um, like in an AP stats course or something like that. Um, but um, this would be the average deviation of a data point from the mean, um, like the mean absolute deviation um, of our data points from the mean. And we're going to kind of visualize this measure um, because I think this is kind of a helpful way to introduce something called standard deviation coming up. So consider this um, small data set here representing the heights of 10 high school boys. And um, what we're going to do is calculate the average distance from the mean in this data set. So kind of like what you see up here, this is sort of an example um, where I have some data points and I'm calculating the distance from zero. So, so these data points apparently average out to zero. So these lines kind of represent the distance from from the mean for each of these four data points. We're going to do something very similar with this heights data. So um, first, I need to calculate the average um, from this sample, because I don't actually have it written down here. So I'm going to add um, these values up, and then I'm going to divide them by 10. And hopefully, I add them up correctly. Um, but And then if I divide by 10, I get 68.5. I'm just going to trust that's correct. I hope it is. So X bar in this example came out to 68.5. So if I think about kind of this number line up here, 
And I'm gonna put 68.5 here in the middle with kind of a horizontal line. Um, and really what I should do, this looks a little bit wonky, so let me, um, let me do 68.5 and then I'll do like a little tick mark. Okay. Um, all right. So um, we're going to um, kind of identify where these different data points are. So I'm going to start with 70. So 70, is, we'll, we'll just put it right here, somewhere above 68.5. And so here is Rodrigo's data point, And Rodrigo is one and a half inches above the mean. Next, we have Stan. Stan's at 65 inches. So that's going to be a little bit farther down. It's going to be about two and a half inches below the mean. So here's Stan, um, and this is the distance of Stan from the mean. Um, we can kind of continue to do this with all of our data points, so maybe 73 is over here. I don't know if I'm being super precise here. Maybe I should kind of like fill in uh, 67. Oops, that should be 65. I just realized that I labeled this one wrong. Okay, so this is 65. 66, 67, 68, something like that. Not super precise, but it's, it's good enough for us. 73, 68 is going to be like right here. 62 is going to be a little bit farther down, so 62. 69, 71. 65 again, 70, and 72. All right, so the mean absolute deviation is really the average um, length of these lines. If I were to take all these lengths, add them up and divide by 10, that would be the mean absolute deviation of my data from the mean. And that tells me about how much variability there is in my data on average. Um, so um, I'm not going to do that here because that seems like a lot of work, but essentially what I would do is I would do um, like, so 70, the, the absolute deviation is 1.5. So I would do 1.5 plus the average deviation for 65 is going to be 3.5, I think, um, plus 4.5, so on and so on. And then I would just divide that by 10. All right. So... Um, I introduced this because I think this is a slightly more intuitive way to get into standard deviation is by thinking about the mean absolute deviation. But then um, the standard deviation has a slight twist to it. And that is instead of um, adding the absolute deviations, I'm adding the square deviations instead. And there's not a really a, an easy explanation as to why this is the case in statistics. Um, but the, the reasoning has to do with the fact that absolute deviations are a little bit um, um, uh, challenging algebraically um, to do. Um, technically, it's not an algebraic operation, whereas adding and subtracting and squaring and all those things are algebraic operations. So, so in the development of statistics, um, you see absolute deviations kind of avoided for measures like standard deviation, instead what's going on is we just square the deviation and that ensures that it's a positive value, that, um, that this distance is preserved as kind of a positive contribution to this absolute deviation calculation. Um, except that they're not absolute deviations anymore, they're, they're square deviations. So um, the, the larger this deviation is, the larger it's contributing to this measure and um, I just add up all the square deviations and divide by n. And this measure, if I, if I were to stop right there, I would call this the variance. So the variance is very close to the mean absolute deviation and it's measuring variability. It's measuring kind of this average variability, but it's technically measuring the average squared distance from the mean in my data. Now, um, if I were to take the square root of that though, then I would call it the standard deviation. And um, if I were to take the square root, that can be kind of helpful because it puts it back into the units of my original measure. So variance is going to be essentially the squared version. It's going to be, you know, wh whatever that MAD is going to be, the variance is sort of like the squared version of the MAD. Whereas um, the standard deviation, by square root rooting it back, 
I'm going to get kind of back into the units of the variable that I was working with. So we kind of think of standard deviation as like the typical deviation or the average distance from the mean approximately. So why do we have both? Um, and that's because of just the reason that I gave you where the standard deviation is going to be more practical because it's going to be in the units of the variable that I'm measuring. But the variance is a simpler calculation. So um, whenever I'm measuring variability in other statistical contexts, and I need to measure variability within a larger process or framework, oftentimes I'm going to use the variance um, because I don't need um, to take that extra step and calculate uh, the square root of my, my variance if, I'm just, if I just need some kind of measure of variability in my method. So, so this is better as a standalone measure, whereas the variance is better within larger calculations, I would say. Um, also note the symbols. Um, so this Greek letter sigma is used to represent standard deviation if I'm representing the entire, if, if it's like a parameter. So if I am kind of approximating the standard deviation of a population, um, then sigma represents that measure. Um, and then if I'm measuring variance, then sigma squared. Um, so I just put the squared on it, and that would be the variance. However, um, oftentimes I'm only going to make measurements from my sample. So, um, for example, um, if I'm doing sample statistics, then I would use the letter S and S squared to, to represent the standard deviation and the variance of my sample information. There's also something else that gets a little bit tricky, um, and that is whenever we measure variability with a sample, um, we usually make a slight adjustment to the calculation if the point is to try to estimate a parameter. Um, and there's not a really quick and easy way to explain why that's done, but I kind of attempt to explain that here in this box as simply as I can. I and mean, it has to do with the fact that whenever we measure um, variability with a measure like standard deviation slash variance, um, and we were to divide by n, we are very likely to underestimate the variability with this measure. And that's because we have to substitute an x bar, so our sample mean, instead of knowing what mu is when we make this calculation. And the thing is that my data is going to be conveniently centered around x bar. My sample data will be conveniently centered around x bar. Um, therefore, I'm going to slightly underestimate the true variability if I were using mu in that calculation instead of x bar. You don't actually need to know that. So, so nothing I said just now makes a whole lot of sense to you. That is totally OK. That is just my explanation for a question that I know a lot of folks have. And maybe that was helpful. Maybe that was just like, what? Um, either way, that's totally fine um, if you didn't completely follow. Um, I will jump back here. So um, if we're being consistent with um, interpreting the heart rate data, um, notice that uh, the standard deviation for our heart rate data came out to 12.62. The variance came out to 159.34. So notice that, that uh, if I'm thinking about the average deviation, the average distance from the mean, for the class data, 12.62 is a little bit more sensible. Like the average student is about 12.62 units away from the mean. Um, obviously, some are closer, some are farther, but 12.62 is kind of the average distance of a student from the average heart rate. This measure is not, the variance is not in the units of my, of my variable, right? So 159 is not helpful in that sense. But it is a measure of variability. I could use it in a more complex method as a kind of a stand-in for, for representing that variability because it's a simpler calculation. But this is the more interpretable, uh, interpretable measure as kind of a standalone measure.